guys! So, it has been quite a week here in One Book July land, let me tell you. I wasn't really expecting much to change, but then things happened. So, these are my two books that I've been using for the whole of the month. So, I've officially been doing two book July. My personal planner and my work planner. So, in the personal planner, everything has been going really well, except for the meal planning, which has been a bit of a disaster, as you can see. And I'd like to get back to doing it. You can see this week I only did it sporadically and things really, really suffer when we don't meal plan. Part of it is because James has been working a lot and when he's not home during the day, I kind of feel like it's not worth bothering because it's just me and I think I'll be able to sort something out, but then I don't and I get really hungry and <laughs> it just goes terribly wrong. So I'd like to get back to that. But in terms of the planner, it works really well. It's not the planner's fault. The monthly spread on the weeks is the perfect place for it. It's just that I don't do it. So that's my fault, not the planner's fault. It will be there waiting for me when I get it together. And then the weekly spread is also going really well. So I really, really love having everything in my weeks. I've got appointments and events here. I've got gratitude here. I've got finances here and then I've got my to-do list which is divided into a.m. and p.m. roughly and that all works really well there's enough room for everything very very happy with it at the bottom here I put I think I had this last week so sorry if you've already seen this I list the highlight of the day so I've just written out every day of the week and at the end of the day I write in the thing that I'm most happy about or that I most enjoyed during the day because that was something that I missed from my gratitude book when I transferred the gratitude into here. And then here I just have space for notes. So anything like I'm going to see a friend tomorrow and I've written her address there because I've never been there before and that kind of thing. So that works really well. In terms of the lists or the collections, I've also been using, so a lot of it's the same as what it was before, but I have brought in my cinephile uh, which was in a traveler's notebook and it still is in a traveler's notebook, but I put it in here so I can write down any films or TV shows that get mentioned that I want to see so that I don't forget them. And that's working really well. So in terms of being able to fit everything into the weeks, that has been a huge success and I'm really happy with it and I want to continue to keep all of this stuff in the week. So that's definitely one point in favor of One Book July. Then in terms of my work planner, everything is, is also the same. I haven't really done anything, I mean, dramatically different or different at all. It's just the same as what you saw last week. So I'm keeping all of my daily week work to do's and my schedule in the weekly spread. And then the daily spread is for notes and the monthly spread is just my overview of appointments. So there's there's nothing new there. This system with the two of these works extremely well and I love it and I don't have any plans to change it. But what has happened? I think it was maybe three or four days ago I had a day where I felt like it was going to be really busy in terms of like lots of little bitty things to do. And as I said before, those are the days when I used to really like having a daily planner just so that I could write everything out in a list from morning till night and not have it be divided and also include routine things on it. And so I mentioned in my last update that I was hoping to be able to get through the month of July without using it, but I would see how, how things went when I had a really busy day. So <laughs> the busy day happened and I cracked. So, as some people on Instagram very kindly said, don't think of it as crumbling, think of it as discovering what works for you. And indeed, that is what happened. That's the positive way of looking at it because this is all just for fun anyway. So it's not like I'm going to get banned from One Book July Club if I don't make it through the whole month. It, I think that the idea is just to try streamlining things as much as you can and then see what works, what you need, what you don't need. And it's worked really well for that. So I really felt like the night before the busy day, I was kind of like going over my head and I'm going to have to do this and I'm going to have to do this and I have to remember this before I get out. And the thing about the weeks is that even though I've tried dividing it into AM and PM, it doesn't have enough room to be able to list out every single thing in order. And I like to make lists. I am, I think, quite 
the natural list maker. So I like to have a nice long list of everything and I can just go da 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 da. And this doesn't really work like that because of the setup. First of all, it's horizontal, which I don't mind because you can still have check boxes. But secondly, because there's just not enough room to put in all of your routines as well as all of the unique things. I've mentioned this before. And the same for the work planner. So the work planner is more than enough to put all of my work to do's in. But when you've got them, like, you know, they're both happening at the same time and you want to be able to see it all just laid out, that is where the daily planner comes in. So as you know, I've got three different undated notebooks that I've been using as daily planners. And that would be the logical thing to do is just to take one of those. But because my Hobonichi A6 Avec has been unused since I finished the first half, that was my gratitude book, and I transferred the gratitude over to here. This was unused and it's dated, so obviously it was like a ticking clock that was annoying me, you know, saying, you're not using me, use me. And I had previously had a bit of a dilemma about this because I thought, if I start using this for my daily planner, then I'll basically be stuck with it for the rest of the year because it's dated and I won't want to waste it and I won't be able to use any of my beautiful undated notebooks until January, which seemed kind of sad, but at the same time, I didn't want to invent another use for a planner that I would then possibly feel overwhelmed by. And I thought a daily planner is something that I'm guaranteed. To, I, I really know that I like having a daily planner. I don't necessarily use it every day, but it's nice to know that I have it when I need it. And so this is what happened. So you can see the fateful day. It was Thursday. So it was Wednesday when I decided that I wanted it. So it was Wednesday night that I started writing out all of these things. And it was just such a huge relief having it because I could just check it and see this is everything that's happening. Usually most of these things actually happen in the morning or morning-ish because I always get up late. So it's usually the things that I have to do before I start work. Then after I start working, I'm just working and then I use my work planner to map up those to-dos. And then I usually come back to it again in the evening if I feel like there are a lot of things going on that I want to keep track of. So it's not actually a complete list of everything that happens in the day, but it's just the things that I want to see written out. So I used it two days in a row, was really happy with it. So it was Thursday and Friday. And then today I haven't needed it because it, it hasn't been as complicated. Usually on Saturdays, uh, well, it's usually my day off. It's the Jewish Sabbath, so I don't really have tasks in the same way as I do during the week. Today was a little bit different because I, I had to take Mochi to the vet because he he hurt his, his paw. He's okay now, um, thank goodness, but I, I didn't need it, but I just really, really like having it, and I'm actually very much enjoying using the A6. I've never used the A6 for a daily planner, and I've always had problems with getting the A6 to work for me. I tried it as a home planner and that didn't work. And then I tried it as a personal planner for a little while and that didn't work. And then I was using it as a gratitude book, as you know, and that did work, but I started to feel overwhelmed by having this whole page to fill. So I actually thought it would work well as a daily planner because using the undated notebooks, I worked out that an A6 would probably be enough room for me, especially because it's got the grids, which helps you to write small. And indeed, as you can see, I've got plenty of extra room for another column on both of these days. This was as much as I wanted to write down and it was totally fine. And it's nice and small and portable and I love the Hobonichi and it's satisfying getting to use it. And it's actually quite nice because this forms a triumvirate of Hobonichi. So I've got the cousin, the weeks and the A6. So that pleases me. So yeah, I think I'm going to carry on using this as a daily planner whenever I need it. The fact that it's dated stresses me out a little bit because there will be some gaps like today, but it doesn't bother me too much because I feel like I'm getting good use out of it. If I don't need a daily planner every day, then who cares? I'll I'll still use it probably, you know, at least three or four days out of seven and it's cute and it makes me happy. So that has come back into the rotation. So I'm officially now doing three book July, I guess, because these are, these are my books. Obviously this one, I don't carry around with me. So usually if I have to leave the house, I just take this, which is my wallet as well. I don't take this unless I'm going somewhere that's specifically work related. And I don't take this one out of the house because that would be silly, right? <laughs> so it's like a three book July setup, but it actually can go down to one book depending on the circumstances. Then that's not all, there's more. 
I also wrote a couple of quotes in my quote book. So I mentioned at the beginning of the month that I've been using this for positive quotes just for like when I'm feeling a bit down and I thought that it would be nice to have this, you know, big collection of positive quotes that I can read over and add to. And I was not sure what I was going to do with One Book July because I wanted to like kind of be as official as possible, even though I was using two books. I wanted to limit everything to this and this. But then it also kind of seems silly to write quotes down in this and then transfer them over to here later because I want this to be a permanent place that's just like a repository of positive quotes. So I think around the same time as I started using this, I thought, like, who cares? The main thing is that I have a system that works for me. This is not a planner anyway. This is a completely separate thing. So it's not like technically I even need to include it in the system. So I wrote some quotes in here. I was feeling a bit depressed and I thought this will be the thing to do. And I preferred writing them in here where I know that they're going to stay rather than writing them in here, taking up space for my notes pages when I'm, I know that I'm going to be copying them over anyway. So this, if you, if you count it, is also kind of <laughs> add, been added into the lineup. Although, as I said, it's not actually a planner. And then the final thing, the finance planner. So in the last update, I said that I had decided that I wasn't going to use this for the rest of the month. And then somehow, I'm not sure what it was, but I was thinking about it and I was looking at it on the shelf and I was kind of feeling sad and I was kind of feeling like I miss all of my other planners. And I, I'd enjoyed the kind of little holiday that I'd had for the first couple of weeks just using these two and not having to copy anything over and not having to think about using any other planners but then I started to miss them and they were looking lonely on the shelves and I thought part of the reason why I have all these planners is because I enjoy using them and I was just like you know what I'm just going to copy my finance information into here so I copied it over it only took a couple of minutes everything is up to date now I thought if I keep doing it once a week it, it's really a very minimal investment of time and then I have everything in here where I can just look at it if I want to. So obviously everything is in here as well and I'm going to keep it that way but I think I like the fact that this is just completely dedicated to finances and it's a nice place to, it, it's sort of it's all consolidated whereas this is my, uh, as uh, Amy Loves Paper says, this is my dirty planner in the I don't really think too much about having it be perfectly neat and tidy. I just write things down. It's very much of a working book. Whereas this is more something that I can go back to and check. Like if I want to see how much we spent on groceries over the past two months, I can just easily go back and check. Whereas in here, it's kind of, you know, it's a bit cramped. And this is really, really good for writing things down on the go because throughout the day, if I spend money and I want to record it, because I write down like all of the money that I spend, and also my bank balance, it's so easy to put it in here rather than putting directly in here because this is always with me, whereas this is on the shelf and I'm very lazy, so I don't like to get up and go from wherever I am to the shelf in the living room and put it down in here. So I think it's essential having it in here as the main place. This is like my command central, everything is in here, but then I can also have it in here as a more long-term reference. So this has come back into the lineup. And the only two things that I haven't incorporated that I was considering possibly bringing back in at some point are the home planner, which just, as I've said, just tells us where we are, basically. And I have, I decorate it. So it's kind of my, my fun decorated planner, which I miss because I, I usually do that on Friday nights and I miss having that as a thing to do. And the meal planner. So again, as I said, I'm putting all of the meal planning in this. Well, in theory, I've been rubbish at doing it, but this is communal. And so it's, it's nice to have that. And I haven't really missed it as much. What I was thinking of doing when One Book July is over is making this into the combined meal planner and whereabouts home planner. I should just call it the whereabouts planner because that's all I put in here or like joint appointments because I think that probably I could fit all that information into this one planner. It would be like meals over here and then whereabouts over here for the day. I might have to reconsider the use of stickers and be a little bit more judicious to, you know, have everything fit in here because these boxes are 
quite small. But I think I could do that. And that would be kind of a compromise, whereas instead of having two joint planners that we consult, we just had one. So I'm not sure I'm thinking about that, but I'm not going to do anything for the moment. I'll leave these on the shelf, but I definitely will come back to them, or at least one of them in some form when the month is over. So that is my current planner situation. I will be back again soon with another video, and then I'll give you another update at the end of next week if things have changed. So as always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you again soon.